Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Pastor Dale. You ever um, <laughs> have your phone in front of you on your desk, and then over here on the right-hand side, you have the mouse. The mouse is for the computer, and all of a sudden, you take the mouse, and you think they're going to click on your phone. I do it all the while. Anyways, so the question has come up to me. Should you go to church every week? Good question. I'm glad you asked. All right. Every now and then, I do get asked this question about going to church. And I feel that it is really necessary for us to go. So I dug into the scriptures and I found a few interesting passages that I believe will answer this question for you. First of all, um, the ones who have asked me this usually are, are believers. Uh, I've never had that I know of an unbeliever ask me about this. Um, and they claim that Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior, and I don't doubt that. I mean, I don't know their hearts. They're, they're the ones dealing with God, not me. Now, that being the case, I'm going to share a few things with you about this. And we're going to start in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 29. We read these words. I have to look at my screen, so if I look like I'm looking away, it's because I'm looking at the screen. For those whom he foreknew, who? God foreknew, okay? He also predestined to become conformed to the image of his Son. In other words, to be like Jesus. That means um, to live like Jesus lived, okay? And that's really what he's talking about here. Now, we also know that according to 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says that we have been made into new creations in Christ, right? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's what? A new creature. All right, got that? So, since we are new creations, and that God has been working um, on us to make us in the image of his Son, then we need to look at the scriptures as to whether or not Jesus went to church himself or not. Of course, in his day and age... And him being Jewish, Jewish, Jesus would have attended what they call the synagogue on a Sabbath day. Because they didn't, you know, Christianity wasn't around at that time. And of course they didn't have the Baptist, the Methodist, the, the Presbyterian, the Lutherans, everything else. They just had, they had the, the, the temple, of course, in Jerusalem. But they had synagogues, you know, in all the, all the different towns. And of course we know that the Sabbath day, the Jews were required to keep the Sabbath. you got to remember something. Even though he's Jesus... He's God manifested in the flesh. He is obligated to keep the law. Why? Okay, because we know that Paul talked about, about the law and that the, the law is our teacher, but we're not, you know, subjected to the law anymore. Here's the reason. Jesus had not gone to the cross yet. He had not died. He had not given up his life um, for us. And he had not been resurrected from the dead. He was still alive here on earth. So therefore, being alive on earth, he was obligated to, to keep the law. He was obligated to do what the Jewish law said. After all, he made the law, right? Okay, so, now, and it says in Luke 4.16, now listen to this very carefully, Luke 4.16, and it shows that he did attend the synagogue on a regular basis. And it reads, and they came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, okay? And as was his custom, dig that, as was his custom, custom just like it's my custom when i was a kid being brought up to go to the methodist church every sunday in our hometown because i, cause I always walked my grandma uh, my paternal grandmother there she was a church organist and she was just just a fantastic lady <laughs> that's all i gotta say but i went with her every single sunday so that was as of custom that was something that i did every single sunday along with grandma all right now and it says as was his custom, he entered the synagogue on the Sabbath. And, of course, he stood up to read in this particular one. That's when he wrote, uh, read uh, from Isaiah. So we can see from here that according to the scripture, that Jesus did go to service on a regular basis as because it was his custom. That being the case, and with God trying to make us and shape us into the image of his son, would it not make sense to you and to me that we should want to go to church? Okay, in fact, King David said in Psalm 122, 1, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. See, back in those days, man, the temple and going to the synagogue, that, that was a big thing. That was, that's what they looked forward to. And that's why David wrote, I was glad when they said it to me. It's the same way with me. 
I'm glad when someone says, hey, let's go to the house of the Lord. Let's go worship God today. Let's go to church. You know, let's go to my church or whosoever church. Uh, let's go worship God. I love it. I, I really look forward to it. Okay. And I pray that you do the same. All right. So attending um, the synagogue or services at the temple in those days, as I said, it was a really big deal. And um, it's just, it just was. I mean, it's something they looked forward to every single week. Now, Let's look at a couple other passages that could support the findings um, that, that I uh, support or found today to go along with Luke 4, 16. I'm having a rough time. Anyways, so let's look at a couple other passages. There we go. That could support my finding that one needs to attend church on a regular basis or they, they should uh, if possible. Because I know that there are times like there's going to be inclement weather. Um, maybe something happens like the vehicle, the riding in broke down. Um, so there could be some reasons we just can't go. A uh, person may have injured themselves where they can't walk and so on and so forth. So that's understandable. Okay. But if not, yes, we should be in church. All right. Now, um, staying home to watch football does not count. Sorry, guys, but that's the way it is. All right. So let's look at the book of Hebrews, chapter 3, verses 12 and 13, as a little bit of support. And he says, take care, brethren, that there not be in any one of you an evil, unbelieving heart that falls away from the living God. But encourage one another day after day, as long as it is still called today, so that none of you will be hardened by deceitfulness of sin. Now look, I like this verse, because what it's showing you here is, is that we should be encouraging each other, because when we encourage each other, um, it helps us to keep our our, our 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 focus upon the Lord so that we don't begin to develop an unbelieving heart. And it's easy in today's world to develop an unbelieving heart. It really, really is. You know, all a person has to do is just start watching the wrong TV show or start reading some, some books they shouldn't, maybe looking at porn, and they start to develop an unbelieving heart and they start to doubt and start to question God. Or maybe something happened in their lives, they didn't get exactly what they wanted uh, when they wanted it, so therefore... A little bit of hardness comes up. So we have to be careful today that we don't do that. Because you don't want sin. Sin will deceive you. Let's be real about it. Sin will deceive you. I know from experience sin will deceive you. Okay. So here's one of the reasons that we should attend services. Because we are, we are to encourage one another. And to help each other out. Especially if someone is tempted. Um, uh, or uh, in sin. Or living in a lifestyle that's not really cohesive to the word of God and doesn't line up, yes, we should encourage them like, hey, brother, listen, you know, from what we're seeing, it looks like you're struggling and we're here to help you, so on and so forth. So we fail to realize that when we indulge in sin, uh, that any kind of sinful behavior can actually, as I said, it can develop, help develop a hardened heart. And we, we don't we don't need to do that. Okay. Amen. Now, the next passage that we're going to look at is out of the same book, Book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verses 23 through 25. He says, Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. God is faithful. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. He goes on to say, And let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds. That's the purpose of church. Besides listening to the sermon and music, stimulate one another through Bible study or through just fellowship or just getting together and chatting and so on and so forth. Then he goes on to see these, and not forsaking our own assembling, our own assembly together as is habit of some, but encourage one another and all the more so as you see the day drawing. The day of what? The day of Jesus Christ returning. The day of Christ. As you know, and especially today because things, things are winding up. Let's be real, okay? Things are at the beginning stages of winding up. That's my opinion. I could be wrong, but that's just my opinion. So we need to make sure that we do encourage each other and build each other up and convince each other. Like, come on, brother, let's go to church together. So on and so forth. So so now, you know, can you see the importance of attending church? I know that I can. Uh, I do because, you know, um, <laughs> you never know when someone's going to come up and, and say something to you that may, may cause you to stop and think when you're at service. A person may have something they, they need to say to you that just is an answer to something from God or God's giving you a message through that person or through the pastor or through a song and so on and so forth. So we have to be careful of this. Let's make sure we're not deceived by sin. Let's make sure that we're not deceived um, 
uh, by false teaching and so on and so forth. And really, let's encourage each other to go to church. I really believe that church is important. There was a period in my life not too long ago that, no, I didn't go to church for a lot of Sundays. And I really, truly regretted it. I really do. Because I, and I'm going again, I've been going again on a regular basis, and I'm telling you what, I absolutely missed it. And I love going to service now. Uh, I go to a good a good church here in Frederick, Maryland. I love the pastor. I love his associate pastors. They're such good, good teachers. The music is great. The worship service is, is good. And uh, the fellowship of the people, the people of the church are really, really tremendously nice. And uh, so helpful. And they're quick. They're quick to help you out and to um, take care of business for you. Amen? So, yes, I believe that it is important that we go to church every Sunday if we can. Okay? Because, look, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ and God isn't making you into his image and his likeness, don't you want to do what he did? So if he went to church, to the synagogue, you should go to church. Okay? We're not Jewish. We don't go to synagogues. But we should go to church. After all, you're representing Jesus Christ. You're representing God the Father Almighty. Because it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. And if it's Christ in you, the hope of glory, don't you think you really should demonstrate Christ in you by going to services and by going in and worshiping and praising God and listening to a good message and taking notes and reading your Bible? Man, it's not burdensome at all. In fact, I enjoy it. I have a blast because I take notes and I remember things and then I get home and I ponder on things. So, yeah, going to church is nice, man. It really is enjoyable. So, get yourself a church. Amen. God bless you. This is Pastor Dilly. Got any comments? I welcome them all the time. God bless you. Bye.